we arrive to the final call, whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely. How does the world economy today fit into biblical prophecy? How do we understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God? What is happening in the world today in the news to tell us where we are in prophecy and what we should be preparing for? The Lamb has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals. Jackie and Brother Steve at WildernessMountainMinistry.org. Uh, what we come here today for, this is a Sabbath by the way, uh, is to share a vision that I had in uh, 1989. Uh, I lived in Georgia. I was uh, living, uh, me and my wife was living in a two-story house. And at that time we were renting and uh, one night, uh, the Holy Spirit was dealing with my heart. And, uh, because He was letting me know that the Gentiles' time, days were coming to a close. And so, I realized He wanted me to get on it and witness to my family, my friends, my loved ones, because time was running out and I wasn't going to get a chance to do it if I didn't hurry. And so, because, it, because of him giving everybody a chance to hear the gospel of the kingdom at least once for a witness, and then the end shall come. And so, so I started preaching from 88 to 96, and praying for people, and going to hospitals, and saw many miracles, many people come back from the dead, and uh, healed of cancers, and coming out of comas, all kind of things happened. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick that shall recover. Um, they'll cast out devils and uh, they'll speak with new tongues. And of course, God gave me the gift of prophecy to uh, edify the, the church. Uh, I'd rather speak in uh, five plain words than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And so I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but they have to be with all done decently and in order in the true church of Jesus Christ without the spirit of error just crept in today and so God is restoring his church back to the faith of the fathers uh, and so uh, how do you qualify brother Jackie to uh, reveal such mysteries in the seals and reveal Daniel's uh, last week the seventh week of Daniel uh, why did the Lord choose somebody like you to do that? First of all, He chose the foolish. He used the foolish things to confound the wise. And not many noble and wise men are called for such a task as this. Uh, you have to count a cost to suffer if you have to lose everything to love the Lord Jesus Christ with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength to enter the kingdom of heaven. Or, and you, that's the way Peter all of them well matter of fact they asked Jesus what shall we receive hereafter for forsaking all as Peter left his wife to follow Jesus he said well you'll have 
everlasting life, 30, 60, and 100 foe in the world to come, everlasting life. You'll be judging the 12 tribes of Israel on 12 thrones and the New Jerusalem coming down. I don't want to get into that. But this vision that I had uh, gives credibility to uh, Daniel's vision being sealed up to the time of the end. It gives credibility to where this prophet here had opened the, actually the seals, the first seal of the White Horse, Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Uh, also, to give the final warning and a call to God's people out there in the world and his churches to repent and turn back to him. Uh, John saw and heard this. Uh, I believe a part of my vision was to pick up as a dispensation the last week of Daniel. John heard that uh, the Lamb intervened, and uh, he said, uh, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Like, immediately, it was open, and, uh, around April 2011, uh, in the historical meeting with a, the religious beast, uh, three world religions, uh, the meeting between Obama and Netanyahu, and his meeting prior to, to the Pope of Rome. I won't get into that because this is the vision why I qualify to uh, fulfill and re to reveal those hidden mysteries. Uh, I, one night I was, uh, in 1989, I was in the house with my wife and Floyd County, Rome, Georgia, and this two-story house, and I was being convicted, and dr I was being drawn uh, to myself, and so I just took my guitar, and I just walked out on, on the front porch and sat down on the steps, and it was at night, and, uh, and I could feel the pull, this draw, and I realized that the Lord was wanting me to start witnessing and, uh, to his people and to get on it because time was running out every second counted and, uh, so anyway that was my heart for them to be saved for my loved ones and, and I like Paul I weep night and day I preached uh, went to hospitals praying for people come out of comas men have shot their own rifle blow the hole through their hole chest slapped through them they had actually come out and massive heart attacks and comas and cancers all things would happen because he said these signs shall follow them that believe now the vision uh, it was uh, it, it goes like this I was like I said I was pulled aside by the Holy Spirit I left my wife inside the living room I didn't tell her anything I just went out there and sat on the steps and Next thing I know, I, the Lord said, be still and know that I am God. And uh, you have to be still. And I was listening and I was waiting. I was anticipating. I knew that something was happening, but I couldn't understand what it was by the draw, the conviction. And uh, it's like you must hurry. We don't have much time. Time's running out and souls are precious. And uh, they are. And so um, so I had my opportunity to witness to all of my loved ones, friends, and family. And, and here I am in, in a higher call now to go on to uh, fulfill this vision with the brother that God has put me, with me here, Brother Steve Zarlin. Um, and he's been a faithful brother standing with me for several years. Ten. Probably eight, ten years now. Ten years. We've been together, and you know, usually men will fight and they'll go this way, they'll fight over this or that, but we never own nothing, never sell anything because it all belongs to God anyway. We take no credit for that. Uh, and, they, and the early church called nothing their own, they had nothing they called their own, so we don't get involved in this or that, this apostate church, uh, religious church world. Uh, we try to strictly go by the King James Version Bible and believe it is to be the infallible Word of God. It has, fa it has not failed the test of time. 
it. So let me tell you about this vision. I was right quick. I was uh, sitting on the steps, and all of a sudden, uh, I looked up into the heavens, and I saw this light. It looked like it, what looked like about as big as a, a big star. And all of a sudden, being still and in the spirit, like John was, I was in the spirit. And all of a sudden, I had this wide awake vision. And I, I looked up and I saw this star go straight to heaven in the twinkling of an eye. And, and so, and then I went into the vision when it took off like a rocket. And, uh, and so, what I saw, it was a dove. It was a dove. And it, and it had wings that were spreaded back like it was about to fly away. It just, just scared me bad. I told my wife, I don't think I'm going to be around long. But I knew God had a plan to reveal his mysteries that are coming out of it. Now I know, and I'm prophesying in part to that which is perfect has come, like we're doing now, revealing the seals and the mysteries. This vision, I was carried, uh, what I saw, the dove, it looked like to be looking on the outside of the body, on the inside of the body, kind of like Paul, who, who saw a man go to the third heavens. He said, whether in the body or out of the body, I could not tell. But he knew a man, Christ Jesus, about 14 years ago. It was called up to... Uh, the third heavens have received revelations that was not lawful for any man to look upon. I believe this was the things that are being revealed now with Daniel's timeline in Revelation chapter 22. Still not up to sayings of the prophecy of this book. That God had, God had planned to reveal that to his servants, the prophets. And so I saw like the dove, like it was went in the chest area right in here and it had wings and it was spreaded back and it, it, it was that took off to the third heavens. Uh, what I saw go from the first heavens, well I saw also fire in the chest area, it looked like fire, like blood, and the, and the blood went down like over the shoulders to the veins, like this far down, like a glow, the same toward the, the legs, like power, like blood, you know, that's what it was. And, what I seen in the form of that death and so let me get this over with so anyway to make a long story short this dove went from the first heavens to the second heavens and it was passing every star so fast leaving the stars behind till it went all the way to the third heavens and he sat down I guess to make intercessions on the right hand of God being carried back 2,000 years in time and I thought there was that was that was something. It was powerful, and so, and then I came out of the vision, and I could see around me again. Everything was black. Uh, it was a wide awake vision, and I have something to confirm here. If Steve could read it right quick, real fast, about sure. Apostle Paul. Well, it's in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, and Paul said, "I knew a man in Christ about fourteen years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell." God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Brother Steve, that's happening now, so that's why I saw this vision, to reveal those mysteries. I had mysteries and the seals, I have no doubt about it. We're going to be coming back on another part on this division. Uh, in this next series, maybe this is Brother Jackie, Brother Steve at WildernessMountainMinistry.org. Check our vision out and, and write us. God bless. Shalom. Shalom.